Exploratory Mission 354 Alpha. Personal Log of Dr. Redacted. Our expedition to explore SCP-354, that gaping wound in the middle of Canada, has finally been accepted. The R&D boys have come up with what can only be described as a submarine with a drill on it. We know that the pool gets denser as you go down, so we suspect that at some point we won't be sinking so much as digging. Hence the huge mining device built onto it. It's not hydrodynamic at all, but we're not going, we're not really going swimming here. My gut tells me that there's something on the other side of the red pool, and just like digging down, up, to China, all we have to do is dig down or up to it. Personal Log of Dr. Redacted Had a nice long debate with O5 Redacted over who's allowed to come. I wanted MTF Omega-7 to come with us for protection, or at least SCP-076, but they won't allow it. Despite the massive damages he continues to cause, they still see him as too valuable to risk losing. Not that he isn't, you know, immortal or anything. Maybe they just didn't have the guts to ask him to go exploring. Eckler, that ass, wanted us to take SCP Redacted with us, but I wouldn't allow it. The file says SCP Redacted was just born before he came through, so he'd be a useless as a guide. He might be of some use as security, but that's mostly cancelled out by the fact that he's data expunged. He probably just redacted anyway. The final crew complement part for myself consists of three agents, two D-class personnel, one geologist, and some guy from R&D who's going to pilot the ship. I already forgot all of their names. Exploratory Team 354-Alpha, ETA 354-A, Mission Log, Day 1. Rotten sort of day to begin a mission. Rumor has it that last night there was a to total containment breach in some area or, n or other. Then it turns out that there's no coffee allowed anywhere inside of Area 354 for some reason or another. The whole mission almost ended in disaster when it turns out that they almost forgot to load the extra fuel on board. Who the fuck is running the show around here? Anyway, we're now underway. For a while there, I had definite feeling of going downward. But now we're dropping much more slowly. Marty, that's the R&D guide's name. Says we're sinking at a rate of 10 meters an hour. Apparently, at this death, the red pool is pretty damn dense. ETA, ET354A, Mission Log, Day 2. Nothing of interest happened, but I learned everyone's names. We have Marty, our pilot, Agent Swanson, Agent Turquoise, Agent 86, Dr. MacArthur, Chris Simmons, and Leroy Tucker. Whoop de frickin' do. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 3. At about 4.30 a.m., gravity suddenly changed direction. Boy, that was a fun way to wake up. We're now rising rather than sinking, which means we're more than halfway there. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 4. We reach the surface, through the portholes, it's mostly dark, which means it's night. We can't go out yet because, for all we know, the atmosphere could be hydrochloric acid. We all, we've got a shitload of sensors outside the ship, analyzing a bunch of stuff. 
whether the air is breathable. What kinds of airborne bacteria we have to deal with. And simple stuff like temperature. We'll know in 8 hours whether it's safe for human life out there. ET-354, Mission Log, Day 5. Turns out the air is totally safe. Except it, it's been night for going on 28 hours now. What's going on? ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 6. Dawn finally came. The sun was huge and red. I'm a biologist, but I know enough about astronomy to know that we're orbiting a totally different star. Is this a different time, a different place, or a different dimension? Leroy suggests that we're in a, another plane of existence. And I think he's probably closest. Pool on the side is way bigger, more like a large pond, or maybe a small lake. The banks are more defined than on our si on our side as well. We took an inflatable raft to the shore. Marty and Simmons stayed behind and headed north. The ground here, or at least around the pool, is almost. Totally devoid of plant life. The only grain we saw was a sort of fuzzy moss growing on the ground that looked more like a kind of mold. The ground is grayish tan dirt. That's like a mixture of sand and flour. MacArthur said it was some mineral or another. But I forgot what he called it. I half expected all of our electronics to not work out here. But that wasn't the first... Uh, first thing to fail. After about two hours of hiking across flat, boring ground, the compass suddenly changed direction. Now it points to what we had previously thought to be east. Evidently, this place, planet's ma magnetics, is it even a planet? Don't work the same way ours do. Not wanting to ri risk getting lost, we immediately made a 180 and headed back to the ship. I could have sworn that the trip was less than half as long as the trip out. Tomorrow we'll work out a way of navigation that doesn't rely on the compass being sane. ET-354A Mission Log Day 7 Lousy night's sleep. The sun never went down. By my calculations, the day-slash-night cycle here seems to last about 43 and a half hours, as opposed to 24 hours back home. It's going to take some getting used to. We agreed on a system of navigation. Firstly, we're going to travel only in a straight line to make sure that we can get back to the ship by simply turning around and heading in the other direction. Unless we encounter some kind of unnavigable jungle, we should be fine. Secondly, Mark already has rigged the radio beacon thing. I don't really remember his explanation, but if we're somewhere within 800 miles, this little gizmo will be able to tell us exactly which direction to go to get back and how far. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 9. We set out for f out a few hours before the sun was scheduled to rise, but when we got to the shore, we found that the green moss stuff was everywhere, and it had grown in mass significantly. My guess is the scuff shivels, shrivels up in the sun during the day and expands at night to suck in nutrients or something. We decided we did not want to walk through it, so we went back and waited for sunrise. Sun came up and we set out again. Moss stuff was back t to its smaller state. It, it just occurred to me that there, there's been no wind at all in this place. The result is dead silence. I'm not ashamed to admit that the overall emptiness of this place is pretty scary. We found an area with none of the moss stuff for, f for a few hundred feet around. 
and decided to camp for the night. The sun is still up, but it's time for us humans to sleep, so I'm calling it night. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 10. Sometime in the night, which was really daytime, fuck, this is going to be get confusing. We were all awoken by some kind of roar. You remember what the T-Rex sounded in, in that old movie Jurassic Park? It sounded a lot like that. Big and reptilian. It was so loud that I was certain. Whatever was making it couldn't be more than 20 feet away. But when we all got out of our tents, we didn't see anything. The whole area is so flat that we see any sort of animal within half a mile or so. But there was nothing. Fucking scary. We packed up camp and continued on. After a while, we stopped seeing the moss stuff. Maybe it only grows around the red pool. And the ground became rockier. In the distance, the land seems to grow more hilly. I think I see trees. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 11. The bare ground has ended. Now we're walking across a vast field of beautiful green grass. It almost looks like a well-mown lawn. The grass seems ordinary enough until turquoise tripped over a rock and arose to find his hands covered in several dozen bloody pinpricks. Apparently the tip of the blade of this grass is incredibly sharp and easily punctures skin. It's no threat to our foundation issue boots, but we must all be careful not to fall on it. We came to a tiny stream, really no more than a, than a trickle. Someone suggested we should refill our canteens, but Leroy and MacArthur wanted to check the water for something or other first. MacArthur took out some equipment and after a few minutes announced that it was not water, but liquid carbon dioxide. CO2 is usually a gas at this temperature. And it's never a liquid. The laws of physics don't seem to be working right. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 14. Haven't had time to record anything for a few days. We made it to an area sparsely populated by trees. The grass there was withered and brown and not sharp enough to pierce the skin anymore. The trees were ordinary, looked like birch, but the leaves were wrong. At some point, we lost Swanson. This place is so quiet that none of us really feel comfortable talking. So we have no idea when we lost him. There's a good eight hour window where he could have gone missing. We called him, but none of us wanted to split up look to look for him. During the night, a tree fell on 86's tent. He wasn't hurt, and none of his gear was damaged, although the tent got mangled beyond repair. 86 swears that the tree had been that close when he pitched the thing, and none of us can tell what caused it to fall. The trunk just snapped. We all agreed not to pitch our tents anywhere near a tree from now on. The next day, which was really nighttime, we heard the same roar for a few days ago. Sounded exactly the same as before, and again, we have no idea what made the sound, and none of us can even agree which direction it came from. When it started the rain, we all pitched our tents for the night. This time, a whole lot closer together than we had before. The nearest tree was about 300 feet away. MacArthur confirmed that it's actually rain, and not more CO2 bullshit. We set up this funnel thing to refill our canteens. The Roy donated his tent to Agent 86 and offered to share mine. Since it's a little bigger than the other guys, I asked Leroy Roy what he did to wind up as a D-class. He, he said he raped a couple of people. I think he might have been trying to freak me out, but who knows. Anyway, he's most well-behaved D-class I've ever met, so I don't think he's going to to say, assault me in my sleep. 
ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 17. Good God, the rain has finally stopped. Everything is soaking wet, including us, except for the ground. After not much water, you expect it to be muddy as all hell. The ground beneath the grass is barely damp at all. Perhaps the planes have stored the moisture from the ground more efficiently than the ones back home. We're setting out again. Perhaps the rain awakened some animal life. Data corrupt. Scion Log, Day 25. Seen to be a huge cliff in the distance turned out to be an artificially constructed wall. It's made of, s of solid rusty iron and it stands maybe 50 feet high. To the left and to the right, it goes on further than the eye can see. I can't imagine how thick it is. We have no way around it. We have no way to go over it or through it. You made camp for the night. You'll work out what to do in the morning. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 26. Leroy jury rigged some kind of blowtorch thing with our equipment. I swear, this guy is fucking MacGyver. We cut a hole in the iron wall big enough for us to go through. It turns out on it's only about a quarter of an inch thick, but there's another wall behind it with less than a foot between. Apparently this thing has multiple layers. Leroy cut through eight of them before we made it to the other side. The grass on this side is black. Not burnt or anything, it's just a different color. And finally there's some wind. I was getting tired of... Data corrupt. Included that coming here was a mistake. We have to turn back. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 39. We passed through the second barrier, and we're back in a weird place with black grass. I half expected the whole Leroy cut through it to have sealed up or something, but it was still there. Thank God, or whoever runs the, the, the shell in this world. I don't think MacArthur is going to make it through the night. He lost a lot of blood. ET-354A, Mission Log, Day 40. We awoke to find that MacArthur had crossed. We didn't want to do it, but we had no choice but to terminate him. 86 said that something back home might have, might be able to help him. And he may have been right, but we couldn't afford to have him slow us down. We only have a few days until data corrupt. A48. We made it back to the ship. With only an hour or two to spare. The first thing they asked us was what the fuck happened to Swanson, Turquoise, MacArthur, and 86. As if a few dead team members are our biggest problems right now. Marty has us underway and we're definitely sinking. I just hope they don't data corrupt. End of log. This document was discovered in the Central Foundation database. No such mission to explore SCP-354 has yet been suggested or approved. No records of any personnel mentioned in this log exist. The log's origin is unknown. <laughs>